hello everyone welcome to another video this is uh, the third video in the series uh, so in this video we're going to create a server core uh, in, uh, in uh, server core for server uh, windows microsoft server uh, 2016 uh, server uh, microsoft server 2016 comes in two different editions standard and desktop uh, standard and data center and both of the edition comes as uh, as um, in terms of size uh, it comes in three different uh, sizes uh, of I, I would call it a size it is a uh, full server installation with full graphics second one is server core which we are going to install which is a minimal install and uh, and then there is a third uh, new uh, type of server uh, 2016 introduced with 2016 and it was not available in 2012 that is known as nano server so in this video I'm going to show you how to work with uh, how to install configure and work with uh, core server so from our lab architecture we already have two servers server 1 server 2 full installation and uh, we also have a client uh, in our lab it's uh, Windows 8 but you can have Windows 10 as well now we're going to install core server and uh, we're going to name it canops tor as toronto and c for core and server 3 it will be a server uh, core server the ip address will be 3 subnet mask and uh, the dns will be the same so let's get started now from from our lab architecture we have three servers already we uh, verified their uh, communication so all we need to do is to create another server so since we're starting with server 2016 we need to select the third option here within vmware and in this case i'm going to go and select server 2016 so server 2016 is right here uh, so you see sometime it is not selected by default and here we can name it so based on our lab architecture it is tor and c for core server 3 so it's a core server installation i'm going to copy this so that if i need the name again so here so power on the server and then while it is powering on we can go to settings and we can provide cd image for 2016 which is in my hard drive in this location and make sure it is connected and we can go and restart the guest so now it should be able to recognize uh, server 2016 cd and should be loading files so while it is starting up uh, if uh, if your computer cannot um, cannot is not able to start all four machines at the uh, uh, at this time what you can do you can go to server 2 and pause it so this will release memory and cpu and make this server installation faster so at, at the moment we don't need server 2 so i'm gonna pause this i don't need even the client machine i can pause the client machine as well and at the moment i have server one and server two i need server one to verify communication between server one and the core server so here and on this we can go to install and last time we selected uh, server data center with the desktop experience and this time we're going to select uh, server 2016 uh, uh, as a server core now when selecting a server core it doesn't say anymore server core in 2012 server 2012 used to be called server core but this one this is server core and this is full server uh, nano server is not in the list because nano server is installed uh, in a in a different manner so here i'm gonna go with this server core server core is basically a minimal installation uh, based on documentation we're gonna go with custom we're gonna go with next and it is now starting up and so server code is basically uh, based on the book the book uh, definition server code uh, option is a minimal installation option that is available when you are deploying standard or data center edition for server server core includes most and but not all of the server role server code has a minimal disk footprint and therefore a smaller attack surface due to smaller code base um, so it's a minimal installation it can be installed very quickly it does not have so many uh, roles available it not has it does not have so many application so in in short it has a very small attack surface meaning hackers won't be able to uh, 
easily hack into the server as compared to full installation so and the command I'm command I'm gonna use once the server is installed is help command help command is used to see the list of all the commands I'm gonna use system info to view all the system information I'm gonna use IP config to see the IP configuration and then uh, we will use a small utility that comes with server core it's known as sir s config dot cmd in which we can set up the computer name set up the IP address and then um, so it's it's almost like initial configuration task when in in a full installation and finally we can run powershell command to open a powershell prompt so let's see where is our installation so i'm going to pause the video here once the installation is complete then i'm going to continue so once the server installation is done installation is completed what we can do we can now uh, press Control alt delete and for that we can either uh, in VMware workstation uh, we can press Control alt insert here inside or we can just press these three icons so i'm going to press these three icons and i'm going to press ok provide a new password so i'm providing a new password password is changed and it provides us that command now here right here we can type help help will give us all of the commands that are available inside server core or we can type ip config slash all and ip config slash all uh, can give us ip configuration whereas it says that there is uh, ip address assigned so if i go up so uh, this is the host name computer name that we need to change it to this name and the ip address that is assigned automatically is 192.168.154 this is not our ip address so we need to change it to uh, we need to change it to basically this IP address 192.168.10.3 in order for this server to work with these other servers. Uh, so this is the IP address we need to change. So what we need to do is uh, we can basically say CLS to clear screen. So this command is used to clear screen and then we can type system info. So I'm going to type system info system info basically gives us other system information so it gives us uh, it gives us the server name it also gives us the version the uh, it is data center evaluation version and it is the uh, the version number is this it is a standalone server at the moment it's not joined and it's the original install date and it gives us all this other information physical memory total memory and all so what I'm gonna do now again I'm gonna say clear screen and I'm gonna first uh, rename this server. In order to rename the server, we can use a utility called sconfig.cmd. So as soon as you do, it gives us these options. Now these are not a uh, graphical user interface. So I just double click on this and I can expand the screen. If I press one, I can join it to a domain. If I press two, I can change the computer name. So in this case, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I am going to change the computer name and computer name will be Canips T O R C S R V three. So basically, this is the same name we're following, and enter. So here it says restart the computer. So we'll restart the computer. So it took around uh, maybe less than a minute or maybe one minute to just restart the computer. Since it is a minimal install, we're gonna log in. And once we are uh, <coughs> logged in, let's uh, check if the computer name is changed. We can check it by IP config or slash all, or we can check it by, so our computer name is now changed to this, or we can type the system info command as well. So let's do it, uh, clear screen, and just r let's run sconfig dot sconfig dot cmd and this time we need to change the ip address ip address is uh, right here network settings so i'm gonna press number eight number eight it says the uh, network adopter index we're gonna say zero so this is the network adopter um so index is zero it should uh, it should oh actually it should be one actually so this is one so we're, we're gonna say one and enter So it is should 
so press enter and one it takes a little while and here we can say set network address so i'm gonna say so you need when you press one it will set uh, the network adopter when you press two it will set the dns server so we're gonna say one and enter first of all is it a dhcp or static so in our case it will be a static ip address if you don't know the difference between d dynamic and static it's fine uh we'll be uh going into more detail about dhcp later on so here i'm going to type the ip address i'm going to type uh, ip address as 192.168.10.3 enter and we, we are going to provide the subnet mask if i just press enter it will automatically take this subnet mask or you can type it as well i'm going to press enter so it should take it as a blank but uh, it's not so it's fine gateway is nothing so we're not taking the gateway ip address has changed as it shows here now we need to set up the dns address so number two and here uh, we are going to provide the dns address as based on our architecture it is one so dns preferred dns is set it is saying do you have alternate dns so we don't have alternate dns so dns address is also set up uh, we can return to the previous menu by clicking number four and uh, right here we can restart re shut down the server or we can uh, what we can do we can join it to a domain as well so in this case we can join it to a domain uh, just like we have all other we don't have active directory at the moment so we cannot join it to a domain one more thing we can do we can enable remote desktop right here seven number seven remote desktop so click number seven and uh, we can enable type e so the the letter in brackets we can type that letter and it is enabled so from here do you want to uh, allow all of the client or less number of client we're going to go with one so here we can go with one and it enables the desktop authentication okay so here from here i can exit now and uh, so ip address is changed and the number and the name is changed uh, remote desktop is allowed now let's see how to run a powershell command so we can just type powershell and it should open it should give us the powershell prompt so now powershell prompt as you can see normal prompt is like this powershell prompt is like this we can get get help we can run any powershell command in this so this is how we can configure uh, and install and configure server core um, installation and uh, so in the next video i'm going to show you how to configure nano server installation thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next video